Hello everyone, I'm Denver and I've created this channel to speak about things I find interesting. These aren't things people normally spend their time thinking about and you can rest assured that uh, pretty much none of it will impact your life even in the slightest. Why am I doing this online? Um, I haven't been lucky enough to find many people interested in trivial matters and topics like I do. So I've decided to reach out to you. My audience, if you will. Who knows? We could be friends someday. Okay, so let's start with what we already know. Roman numerals are represented by Latin alphabets E, U, X, L, K, D, and M. Or as we know them in English, I, V, X, L, C, D, and M. Unlike Arabic numerals, these symbols have intrinsic place values. They're 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, and 1000. Now, what do I mean by intrinsic place values? Take, for instance, this number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12,345. The 3 in this number signifies 300. The 1 in this number signifies 10,000. Each of the digits are orders of magnitude different from each other literally. The number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is in the summation of 1 through 5. No, it's the addition of the numbers 10,000, 2,000, 300, 40, and 5. Now let's see how Roman numerals work. Take for instance the number DCLXVI. The value of this number is literally D, C, L, X, V, and I added together. That's 500 plus 100 plus 50 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1, which is 666, which is not 3 times 6, but is 600 plus 60 plus 6. There's no particular reason I picked this number. So let's learn the Roman equivalent of Arabic numerals. We already know the values of 1, 5 and 10. 2 is 2 times i. 3 is 3 times i. 4 is 4 times i. 6 is vi. 7 is vii. 8 is viiii. 9 is V I I I I. At least this is the way the Roman scholars use these numbers. The number 4 can be written in its subtractive notation as an IV, which is literally 1 from 5, and 9 can be written as an IX, which is literally 1 from 10. Of course, there's no real agreement on which one is the correct version. For instance, in most clocks you have 4 represented by 4 i's, but 9 represented with an i-x. Now, what about the next 10 numbers? It's just like adding 10 to each of the numbers. Okay, now what about multiples of 10? As you can see, it follows the same pattern. As with 4 and 9, 40 and 92 have alternate forms. What about multiples of 100? And again, 400 and 900 have alternate forms. Those are also called subtractive forms. Take for example the number IIX. Now this could mean two things. It could either mean 2 from 10 or 1 from 9. Either way, they both equal to 8 which has the popular notation VIII. -I -I. Now consider the numbers IIXX. -X. This could mean one of two things. It's either 2 from 20 or 8 from 10. Now 8 from 10 is 2, for which we already have a notation II. So writing 2 as IIXX -X seems wasteful. Thus IIXX -X is unambiguously 18. The popular notation for 18 is XVIII, but it can also be written as XIIX.
Now consider XXIIX, which is 28 by the way. XXIIX is literally 10 plus 10 plus 8. 28 can also be written as 10 plus 8 plus 10, which is XIIXX, or as 8 plus 10 plus 10, which is IIXXX. Okay, so what about XXXII? Now, this number is 10 plus 10 plus 12, which is 32, and hence it's not a valid way to write 28. So, here are the rules for subtractive forms. As long as a symbol is to the left of any other symbol of a higher value, its position is irrelevant. A number with symbols placed in descending order of value is unambiguously the sum of the individual values of the symbols. For numbers in partial subtractive forms, its value equals the sum of the symbols that are in descending order of value less the sum of all the subtractive symbols. Okay, now let's talk about popular convention. Examine the number 849. It can be expanded as 800 plus 40 plus 9. It can also be written in its additive form as DCCCXXXXVIIII or in its subtractive notation CCMXLIX. Now, both these notations are correct and there's no official convention followed, but there is an underlying unspoken convention. Between the V and 4 I's and IX, 9 will always be written as an IX. Similarly, 40 will be represented by XL rather than the 4 X's. Which of the two should we pick in the case of 800? CCM seems like a logical choice because it's shorter. However, you might want to consider these numbers 3, 30, and 300, and 8, 80, and 800. Both these groups can be written in two different ways. It makes more sense to write 3 as an III rather than an IIV. So the first group seems more sensible. But in the case of 8, IIX seems shorter than VIII. What happens here is the additive notation is given more importance than the subtractive one. Hence, DCCC wins. And this happens with 8, 80, and 800. The number 849 in its conventional subtractive notation can be written as DCCC XLIX. Now let's talk about addition. Roman numerals are intrinsically additive and they almost beg to be added. Let's add the numbers 179 and 454. In its conventional subtractive form, 179 can be written as CLXXIX and 454 can be written as CDLIV. In its additive notation, 179 can be written as CLXXVIII and 454 as CCCCLIIII. To add these numbers, all you've got to do is combine them in the increasing order of value from right to left. Thus, after combining them, the number looks something like this. Five Cs can be combined to a D. Two L's can be combined to a C. Five out of the eight I's can be combined to a V. Two V's can be combined to an X. Now let's try adding the numbers in its subtractive notation. First, let's isolate all the subtractive numerals. I is the only subtractive symbol in the first number. In the second number, C and I both act as subtractives. Now we combine the two sets of numbers separately. We combine the two L's to a C. We subtract C from both ends. And then we subtract 2 from both ends. As you can see, it doesn't matter which notation we use. We end up with the same result. 179 added to 454 gives us 633. 
For the next video, I'll be speaking about multiplication in Roman numerals. Okay, that went well. Was it a good first video? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.